Hey there everybody and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to be starting off this new Andromo playlist by walking you through the updated Andromo interface. Now I was blessed enough by Andromo so they basically found me on another video and gave me a free ultra subscription. So essentially I wanted to walk you through the interface and what it looks like but we wanted to go through pricing with you one more time. So we're going to go through the pricing, then we'll walk through the updated interface and cover some of the points that they asked me to cover in this video. Now, before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. Now, jumping straight in, so when we are looking at Andromo, they have one of the cheaper platforms as far as cost is concerned. So you'll see here that you have your three tiers. So in the hobbyist, you'll see that you get two gigs of storage, 30 projects, no monetization options, such as generating ad revenue. If you upgrade to this pro tier, then you will get to publish on Google and Amazon 10 gigs of storage. There's some other options here as far as getting ad mob, Facebook bidding, things of that nature. But the one that I think is the biggest bang for your buck is going to be this one here. And you'll see the primary reasons for this is you're building apps for Android and iOS. And then there's no branding, and then you also get custom package name, paid access to content, but also you get a ton of storage and native ads as well. So I think this one is the biggest bang for your buck overall. And then you can also scroll through the page if you want to learn more about the different uh, things that are included with these plans. So you'll see you will get the dashboard spacer, dashboard cards, book library, and you get the WordPress blog. So there's a ton of different options that come with this top package, which make it worthwhile. And it's not that much of a price difference compared to the others. So now that we've covered pricing, let's walk through the interface real quick. Now, before we go through the interface, I want to cover some things that they wanted to note are basically new features in comparison with the old version. So they noted that there's an easy to start option. So basically when you first line or log into Andromo, when you can see their videos on their channel, but essentially they have a way to walk through an easy to use builder to kind of basically create the formatting for your app a little bit more quickly instead of doing it from scratch. And that has 30 plus templates. The iOS build is available. They have what's up stickers. They have wide options for app design, which many builders nowadays do. They have the WordPress blog, which I mentioned earlier. So it's a WordPress blog component, multiple image upload, and then a bunch of different monetization options. So I think that that's a great way to go ahead and get started just to walk you through this. Now you have this easy start menu, and then over here you can click on projects, but we'll go through the easy start menu first. So you can choose whatever template or format looks best for you. I kind of like the look of this. Let's just go with small business. So you have some basic cards. So we'll click build this app. And then you'll see that it'll start copying now. And while we're waiting on this to load, I think one of the great features of this platform is the fact that they allow you to have multiple projects running simultaneously. So you'll see right here, you have your quick start guide and then you have your components. You can choose popular. So they have photo gallery, carousel group, native ads, linking cards. They have these layout options. You can go with media. So you can add in an audio player, YouTube. Um, so if we wanted to click on YouTube right here, you'll see that we have this section here and it'll display videos by username, channel ID, playlist, search phrase, single video. And then you can paste the URL here if it is to a specific video. And then you'll see over here on the right hand side, we have a ton of different options that are basically the default components for the application. So we can rearrange over here if we wanted to. Um, but let's just say we wanted to change settings. So we can click on the about us page. You'll see that they can't show the web view in preview mode, but you would have the ability to open links externally, enable wide port. But the idea here is these are basically the components that are in your application. So you'll see we have about us, services, hairstyles. So these are the photos here. So if you wanted to, you could delete this and click delete. And then you'll see that the photos that were right here are now gone. So if we wanted to, we could essentially choose to delete all of this content. And then we could leave really just a few options. So we'll delete this. Uh, so the, we have the 
Barbershop, which is basically the app, you have About Us, Services, Start Page. Now you can change the settings here so you can add ads if you want and um, then you can make adjustments to other settings, so the About Us. So the ads would look like it's for the app as a whole, but you can also rearrange your pages here, uh, and then you'll see that it uploads or updates in your app builder. And then you can click on the page. It looks like there are some things that don't render in this preview here, but this is the basic overview. So you have your components on the left, you can choose whatever options you want to add. So let's just say you want to add this WordPress, which is for the ultra plan. And then you'd have a base URL. So I'm hoping it would work with just a standard website like google.com. So we'll try. And then you could put this WordPress page wherever it is that you feel like it would fit. So we could put it over here in About Us. And then when you go to the About Us page, you'll see that the WordPress site is right here. And then it's not working because we would need an actual URL to a legitimate site, but that is an option and you can kind of customize that in the settings menu so you can add ads, uh, which is kind of cool that you can limit ads to specific areas of the app instead of just doing it in the whole application. Now, a couple other options. So you have options to uh, really do tons of different things. So you can add quick access buttons. So we could add a button. So we'll scroll through. So you'll see, the, again, the WordPress site is here. And we have our start page here. If you want to add an action button, we'll just say action and describe it. This is a button. And let's see. And then that's really all that there is to getting that set up. You'll have the URL right here. You can adjust the style. So dashboard, we could say use custom size. You can choose your column count settings. You can hide the component if you want, add search tags. You can change the content. Um, so just a couple of options for you, but we have that action button in the services page. We just can't actually render that here, but you effectively do have that action button there, so we could try maybe moving it to the About Us page. It won't let us load that either, so we can see where else we could put this. But effectively, you have that button there. It's just not allowing it to render in this web view mode. So we would just need to add a different page so that we could see what that looks like. So that's the basic idea of how you add your components. So effectively, you just go over here, you find whatever it is you're looking to add, so you can add your native ads, maybe you wanna add a media player, you just click the plus sign. You'll see that it's added over here. You choose where in the home page you want it, so you change the ordering here. And this is basically your page. So your builder is technically over here on the left and on the right hand side, so it's a little different than some of the builders out there. But the idea is you choose your components, your style settings, and you can adjust all of that on the left. You'll see the user interface right here, or the UI. And then you'll have your options over here on the right hand side. Now the audio player, which we just added, is right here. You would need to add your audio tracks for that to work. But the idea here is you can make the change on the right-hand side, and you'll see now they've actually moved. And you can click on the settings to add ads to certain pages, to delete or hide it. Um, so that's the way that you're going to add the different components. So I won't scroll through all of them, but one thing that is worth noting, I love that they have this Firebase setup here. So you can have um, basically your photo gallery, audio player, PDF document, and book library, and essentially set this up to connect with Firebase. So you'll set up a Firebase account, upload the connections or the content, and they streamline, or streamline the process to get this set up. So you'll see when you set up your Firebase project, so basically you go to Firebase's website, sign up for an account, set up a project, and then you need your API key, project ID, storage bucket, message sender ID, and Firebase app ID. And then you will also have to put in similar information for iOS, and then it'll allow you to get this component set up and configured. So we won't jump into that right now, but it is worth noting that that's a very easy setup. Now your style, you can change a ton of different options. So your component card views, your colors, your app bar, your drawer menu. You have a ton of different settings. So you'll see you can change your app name, version name, version code. You'll see that you have an Andromo key that you can use to sign 
you can use a uh, custom initial route. So there's a bunch of options. You can set up your icon for uh, iOS for Android. You can see the different pro features, ton of other options here like iOS settings, ad mob consent form. You'll have your monetized menu so you can set up your ad networks and see how you can set this up. So you'll see there are tons of monetization options, which is a huge question I get from many of the other YouTube videos that I have. And then you have your Firebase authentication you can set up and your analytics. And then you have one signal for push notifications. Lastly, you have your build menu where you can Basically, it'll tell you that you need to save your changes so you can generate your Android APK, you can generate your Google bundle and your app iOS or your Apple iOS. So this is where you're going to build this and then effectively get that uploaded to the app stores. You have your images here and then you can save the changes to the app and you can discard changes. Then you have your build app button over here which will open the build menu so that you can resolve any changes. So if we were to just click save to this and click save nevertheless, although you would wanna make sure you avoid the validation errors, then you can go through what it looks like to actually build the application. So you would need to make sure that you're resolving any errors. I'm gonna guess this is probably one of them so we could click, uh, we'll go here and click save and we will fix validation errors and see if it brings up anything for us. And we'll try to make this a little bit more simple. So we'll delete these because there's not really anything here. And we're just gonna click save and see if this allows us to save nevertheless. And then you should be able to build. So without the validation errors, it's probably gonna cause some issues building it. But you'll see you can build the app and run it on Android devices. And you would have to go ahead and configure all of your settings first. So we haven't gone through the process of setting up icons, the features, and making sure that all of the settings are set up correctly. Because you'll need your developer certificate and things of that nature. Um, so if you need those, you can drag and drop and upload those here. And then, like I said, you would just make sure you have your app saved. And then you would go through and build. And you'll just follow... The information so you'll see it'll tell you here when you're able to essentially do that build and then you'll be able to download the copy and get that uploaded or try to run it on a local device typically you can download an APK file and for let's for example say you want to run it on an Android device if you enable those settings bearing in mind there are some security risks then you can run it on your phone without publishing to the Google Play Store so um, then when you're done with that, you can view all of your projects here. So if you want, you can manage the projects, you can add it to your favorites, edit it, you can duplicate, which is an awesome feature to have. You also have the ability to add to hub and delete. And then you'll see your project size right here. And then you have the ability to view other options. So this will tell you your storage, for example. So you're basically seeing your usage for your plan statistics here. And then this will list all of your projects that you have. And then there's additional tips, trips, tricks, and tutorials here. And then promotion center over here on the right. And then you have this little icon over here to chat in with customer support. Um, so that's really the basics of the viewer overall. So you do have the business tab here if you want to work on impressions and app performance and things of that nature. But that's going through the easy start. Now, you do have the ability to create a new project. And we'll just call this test. And you can skip the easy start menu. Um, so this is way, a way to build one just from scratch. So this way you'll get the same exact app builder, but you'll see that you have really nothing here already. So you just have your dashboard, nothing else. So you'll have the ability to add in your components. So if you want, you can add in, let's just say if we want to scroll down and we'll add in an online media player and we just wanna go back to the home screen, you'll see that icon is now right here. So this gives you the bare bones application so that you can customize it instead of using a template, but many of the formatting and everything else for the interface is the same, just gives you a way to start from scratch. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, again, feel free to take a look at the interface. Again, the way that it's set up, you have your components and style options on the left, your sample user interface here. You'll have some of the details on the components when you select them right here in this area. And then you'll have your basically like a component tree of all of the different components in the application here. And then the settings over here where you can edit your style, 
you can edit ad settings and other settings within the application. And this will also allow you to edit the settings for specific uh, options. For example, the audio player. If we click it, we can edit the settings over here. So that's the builder in a nutshell. They do also have this helpful Andromo app builder guide, which you can use to go take a tour through the app. And they have other videos on their YouTube channel as well. Hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below and I'll see you all in the next video.